as ballet dancers, we're such perfectionists and um, you're not going to be feeling your best when you come back, but that's okay. We're all in the same boat. And um, I think, yeah, we all just need to remember that and, and be really kind to ourselves. After, you know, Queensland Ballet was in lockdown from March until June. How was it for you coming back into the studio after that time? Yeah, um, I guess coming back was quite a surreal experience to begin with. And I think part of that is um, because we were luckily sort of one of the first companies in this part of the world to return to the studio. And I remember feeling really lucky, but also very um, careful because I didn't want to rub it in because <laughs> there are so many um, companies that were still at home holding onto their kitchen benches. And um, we were really, really lucky. Uh, we came back in small groups and we were socially distanced. And um, yeah, that was this real sort of um, almost alien feeling about it. Like it didn't feel like it normally does, you know, normally you go in the studio and it's comfortable, it's home, you know, you know, who you are, what you're doing there. Um, I remember just feeling very foreign um, and it definitely took a little while to really ease back into things. Um, mm. Yeah, strange. <laughs> mm, mm. Did you have any anxieties coming back in? It's, it's unusual for us to be out of the studio for a period of three months and companies around the world have been out of the studio longer than that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, it's dance is a very special art form and, and I think um, we're all, as ballerinas, quite, um, I guess you'd say perfectionists. And um, for me, that feeling of I have to be perfect somehow was heightened um i think it's that pressure to to come back as good as you know that you can be um for us at queensland ballet we finished um we went into lockdown just as we were about to premiere our 60th gala and um that season was massive and i remember in the last few weeks looking around the studio and thinking wow, this is the best I've ever seen this company dance. Um, everyone was so strong, so um, looking just stunning. And I think there was a real collective sense of achievement. Um, and then sort of <laughs> everything went from way up here to it came crashing down. And I think um, maybe a bit subconsciously as well, for me, I wanted to come back already back up there. Um, and, and thinking back on that now, that's a bit silly because, you know, months of lockdown, doing bar, in your kitchen <laughs> you're never going to be there where we were when we were doing ballets like etudes and things like that but that was just the last memory that i had and um really special and you wanted to recreate that feeling and that um sense of you know um pride and and happiness with where you're at um, in the studio and i think um it was definitely for me too much pressure to put on myself <laughs> and slowly I realized that I did um, but it took time I think it was quite confronting coming back and being like wow there's a lot of work to do <laughs> and um, a lot of work that I wouldn't have had to do if COVID hadn't hit so there was that frustration um, but yeah for me it was mostly that sense of like oh why aren't I at where I was <laughs> back then um, and then after some real thinking and um, I guess sort of talking to other dancers and sharing our experiences, I realised, of course, that's silly. Um, no one's going to be the best they've ever been. In fact, it's going to be a really slow and um, challenging process to get back, but um, made all the more rewarding by the fact that we got through it. <laughs> yeah, I think that's interesting. I think sometimes um, communication is key in that, isn't it? Sometimes we think that we're the only one that feels that way or we're the only one that's lost technique, but the fact is that our colleagues have as well. And it's actually sharing, sharing yeah. that. Were there, are there any sort of ways, other ways that you have um, dealt with those expectations of yourself? Um, well, as you mentioned, I do think communication is really key. And I think um, the isolation that we all experienced in lockdown was not so healthy because <laughs> we all sort of were in our own heads and, and thinking about all the fitness we were losing and, and all the shows that we were missing out on and didn't really have a huge amount of time to share that with other people. Um, that being said, 
here at QB, we started working on a digital season um, called 60 Dances, 60 Stories. And that kind of um, brought us all back together as a company, really. And um, we did some collaborating with um, different musicians, different um, choreographic advisors and things like that. Um, and it started to feel like we were working together as a team, which was really, really nice. And within that, I guess the communication, talking about our struggles um, really did help. I think, yeah, it's all about the people. The people really get you through times like that. And absolutely they have, and they've helped me get back on the stage now, which is really special. I think that you have got your first performance this afternoon of yes. Nutcracker. So <laughs> yep. how is that feeling right now? Is that exciting? Um, to be honest, it's surreal again, but amazing. I, I can't believe how lucky we are. And again, I want to stress that I'm so um, grateful that we've managed to get to this point where we can perform for live audiences and now here in Queensland with 100% capacity. It's really exciting. And I know so many companies around the world aren't at that point yet. Um, so my heart goes out to them, but we are feeling really lucky. There's this real buzz around the company at the moment and walking through the doors of QPAC again yesterday, I think everyone was just, you know, grinning because it feels like home, you know, it's, it's a place that we really cherish and is really special to us. Um, yeah, it's a really exciting time here. And I guess it, it sort of makes me think about goals because, you know, when you first get back into the studio and you're not feeling terribly comfortable or confident, but it's these little goals that you make along the way and now you've arrived at your first performance. Absolutely, yeah. Um, you definitely have to uh, break a big thing down into small chunks <laughs> in terms of getting back out there and performing. And um, that was sort of the way we did it here at QB. Um, take each day as it comes and, you know, pick something to focus on and go with that. If you look at where you have to get to, um, it can seem quite overwhelming. So I guess it is really taking each day as it comes and not, um, not sort of putting pressure on yourself to get to that bigger picture straight away. Um, for me, definitely though, each day as it comes has always been something in my career that has helped me because um, if I start thinking about a really important stressful show that's coming up from day one of rehearsals often the anxiety builds and builds and builds to the point where you get to the shows and you're just a ball of nerves um i much prefer to go into it thinking okay let's see what happens today and i'm going to give it my all but i'm not going to be thinking oh my gosh the performance is in you know three weeks and it needs to be amazing yeah finally um I'm interested, have you got any other advice for all those dancers who are going to be coming back into the studio, whether it's coming back into a company with, um, you know, new colleagues, perhaps a new director, or whether it's even just students going back into the studio with, in front of their teacher. What's some advice now that you've had this experience coming back at QB, you could give them for 2021 to really come into the studio with confidence? Yeah, um, I definitely say, number one, be kind to yourself. <laughs> I think, again, that comes back to the whole perfectionist thing. As ballet dancers, we're such perfectionists and um, you're not going to be feeling your best when you come back, but that's okay. We're all in the same boat. And um, I think, yeah, we all just need to remember that and, and be really kind to ourselves. Um, and secondly, I'd say, and again, it kind of has run through my entire career, it's really important not to compare yourself to other people. Um, we're each really unique. And I think our experience of being in isolation during COVID has been unique. You know, different people were able to do different levels of classwork depending on the space that they had, um, depending on the floor that they had. So we all did come back in slightly different condition, um, but that's okay. <laughs> um, we're all sort of on a journey and yeah, I think it's really important to not um, constantly be comparing yourself to others. You're, you're your own unique individual and you have um, something special that no one else has. So cherish that. That's absolutely wonderful advice. And it's been beautiful meeting you, Lucy. And all the yeah, very best too, for Nutcracker today. Thank you. Thanks so much. Great to chat. <laughs>